Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, our goal is to solve an application problem related to graph colorings and scheduling. And there are a few facts we need to remember in order to be successful in this task. First, uh, we need to remember what a graph coloring is. Graph coloring is just where you color the vertices of a graph so that the vertices of the same color are not adjacent to each other. In other words, any edge is joining vertices of different colors. We also need to remember what a chromatic number is. Chromatic number is just the minimum number of colors that can be used to create a graph coloring on a particular graph. For example, the graph on the left is a graph coloring which uses four colors. It's a four coloring. On the right, we have a three coloring of the same graph. And it turns out that this is the minimum number of colors that we need to color this graph so that any two adjacent vertices are different colors. That means that three is the chromatic number for this graph. There are some other helpful facts that you should know in order to work these types of problems. First, in any click or complete subgraph, the degree of each vertex is one less than the number of vertices, and the chromatic number of a graph is at least the number of vertices in its biggest click. When identifying clicks, it's helpful to identify first the degrees of all the vertices in the graph. For example, in this graph, vertex D has degree 1 because it meets one edge. Vertex A has degree 3 because it meets three edges. E has degree 1, B has degree 3, and C has degree 2. Notice that this graph could not have a click of size 4 because that would require four vertices of degree 3. Could it have a click of size three though? So to have a click of size three, we would need three vertices of degree two or greater. And vertices A, B, and C have degree two or greater. And you can see that this is a click of size three. In other words, it's a complete subgraph of size three. So what we can conclude from that is that the chromatic number is at least three. In other words, when we find the least number of colors necessary to create a coloring for this graph, it has to be at least three. And this actually leads us to the conclusion that the chromatic number is exactly three in this case because we have a coloring right in front of us that's a three coloring. That guarantees that the chromatic number is no more than three. So if we know that the chromatic number is no more than three and we know it's at least three, then it must be exactly three. And this is often the reasoning that we use to identify the chromatic number. Another fact that can be helpful in identifying the chromatic number is to understand what planar graphs are. Planar graphs are graphs which can be untangled and they can only have chromatic numbers of one, two, three, or four. This graph happens to have a chromatic number of two. It only takes two colors to create a coloring. Now let's look at this application of a graph coloring. It involves scheduling. Griselda is planning a weekend retreat. On Saturday, there are to be six sessions, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and each attendee has registered and chosen three sessions to attend. Griselda would like to minimize the number of time slots to leave more time for activities. She made a graph indicating the sessions which have attendees in common. Use this information to find the minimum number of time slots she needs. So in other words, in this graph, each vertex represents a session, A, B, C, D, E, or F. And if two vertices are adjacent, joined by an edge, that means that there is at least one attendee who would like to attend both sessions. So Griselda needs to make sure that those two sessions are not held at the same time. So let's think about how colorings can be used. And we can create a graph coloring where each color represents a different time slot. Since the vertices of the same color are not going to be adjacent, there will be no time conflicts. Now, of course, six time slots would work as represented in this graph coloring, but we want the least number of time slots that we need. By finding the chromatic number, we'll find the minimum number of time slots that we need. So we're going to do two different approaches to this problem. The first approach will be to find the chromatic number by trying to find a graph coloring that's the same as the size of the largest click. Remember, 
we know that a graph coloring has to be at least the size of the largest click. If we can find one that's exactly the size, then we know that that's the chromatic number. We also know that in a click, the degree of each vertex is one less than the number of vertices. So by identifying the degrees of the vertices, we can help narrow down where we might have a click. So vertex A has degree three, vertex B has degree two, vertex C has degree three, vertex D has degree four, vertex E has degree two, and vertex F has degree four. Seeing that we have a couple of vertices of degree four, I'm thinking maybe it's possible we have a click of size five. But remember, we would need to have five vertices with at least degree four, so that when we pull out the subgraph, it still has degree four. That's not gonna be possible here. How about a click of size four? For a click of size four, we would need four vertices, each with degree at least three. And that we do have. We have vertex A, we have vertex C, we have vertex D, and we have vertex F. So let's highlight the edges between them and see if we have a complete subgraph or click. And we do because each of the vertices here is connected to each of the other three vertices. Since we have a click of size four, any coloring would have to at least have four colors. Otherwise, two of these adjacent vertices would end up with the same color. Well, if we know that the chromatic number has to be at least four, if we can find a coloring that's exactly four, we'll know that that's the chromatic number. When creating a coloring from scratch, it's a good idea to start by coloring the vertices of highest degree first. For example, in this case, I could start by coloring vertex D red. And in the next step, I would then color anything red that's not adjacent to vertex D. In this case, the only vertex that's not adjacent to D is vertex B, so I will color that one red as well. Now I'm gonna move on to color the next vertex of degree four, if there is one, and there is vertex F, so I'm gonna color that one blue. And I need to color any vertex not adjacent to F blue as well. E is not adjacent to F, and that's the only one. Now I'm gonna move on to the next lower degree, which is three. So either A or C is fine. I'm gonna color vertex A yellow. If there were any other vertices not adjacent to A, I would color them yellow as well, but the only remaining vertex is C and it is adjacent to A. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to a new color, green. So we successfully colored this graph with a four coloring. And since we knew that every coloring has to be at least four, now we just figured out that the chromatic number is at most four, we've narrowed down the chromatic number to four. Now remember, we had decided that by finding the chromatic number, we would find the minimum number of time slots. So four is the minimum number of time slots. And more than that, we have discovered one way of organizing those time slots. We could have one time slot for the blue vertices, so for sessions E and F. We could have a second time slot for the red vertices, so sessions B and D. We could have um, a third session for the yellow vertices, which is session A, and a fourth one for session C. So one of the nice things about using this approach to finding the chromatic number and finding the number of time slots by actually coloring the graph is that you can come up with a sample schedule. It's not the only schedule. There may be other colorings, other four colorings you could use, but it is one schedule that would work. However, there is a second approach which would just tell you the number of time slots that are needed. The second approach to finding the chromatic number is to use the largest click to determine the minimum chromatic number and then determine if the graph is planar to narrow down the chromatic number further. We know that if the graph is planar that we would have a chromatic number of one, two, three, or four. We already know that the largest click is size four, which means that the chromatic number is at least four, four, five, six, etc. If both are true, the only overlap between these would be size four. So let's see if this is a planar graph. A planar graph is a graph that can be untangled. In other words, we can move the vertices around in such a way that the edges no longer cross each other. For example, I'm gonna start by moving vertex B out 
to kind of flip this little V shape out of the graph over here. So I'm going to, in other words, put vertex B between F and E. So I have vertex A, C, D, E, B, and F. And then I'm just going to connect each of the vertices as they were before. So let's start with vertex A. A is connected to C, A is connected to F, A is connected to D. Now let's do vertex B. I like to go in alphabetical order just to make sure I hit everything. Vertex B is connected to E and F. Vertex C is connected to A, which I already have. It's connected to F and it's connected to D. Vertex D is connected to C, it's connected to A, it's connected to F, and it's connected to E. Vertex E is connected to D and to B, and vertex F is connected to A, B, C, and D. So we have all of the same connections that we had before, we just positioned the graph a little bit differently, and we've managed to uncross a couple of the edges, but we still have two edges crossed. Now edges are stretchy, they don't have to go straight. So I'm going to keep the same order of vertices and I'm just gonna take the edge that's between C and F here and I'm just gonna stretch it around the outside of A there. So now we have a graph that is untangled. This means that it is planar, which means that its chromatic number can only be one, two, three, or four. But we know that the largest click is size four, so we have to at least have a chromatic number of four. So we have narrowed it down. Our chromatic number is four. That would mean that in our application problem, four would be the minimum number of sessions required so that we don't have a scheduling conflict. With this approach, however, we don't have a sample schedule. We would still have to figure that out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That'll help other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos.